Audio clip. Zero, six, seven, four, clapping. I got the clap. Whoa, don't tell my wife, okay. What's going on guys? So um, this is just gonna be sort of a casual video. I'm gonna talk to you about a new little monitor that I got. It's a new portable monitor from Uperfect, some Chinese brand. I actually bought this for an upcoming project that I've got in the works, but um, I wasn't initially gonna do a standalone video on this display until I realized just how, how nifty it is. There's a lot of little interesting features and quirks about it that I think uh, you guys might enjoy. And it, it's so versatile that I wanted to put it on your guys' radar just in case you have a need for it. This is the Uperfect 13.3 inch portable monitor. This video is brought to you by ModMic, the modular mic you can fix to any set of headphones for the best of both worlds. High quality voice audio, superb noise canceling, and the option for wired or wireless models are just a few reasons I've been using their products for years. ModMic is a great no compromise solution for gamers who care about sound. Click on the link below to learn more. I saw at least a couple other monitors on Amazon, that's where I got it, that looked exactly like this, same housing and everything, but under a completely different brand, which means they probably got it from the same OEM. That being said, the brand could still make potential changes to the, to the end product, so uh, for all intents and purposes, I would consider this uh, more or less a, a unique product. And just for reference, I have my MSI GS65 Stealth 15.6 uh, inch laptop just beside it, so you can kind of see it scale. Let's just dive into some specs here. This is a 13.3 inch display. 1920 by 1080 is the native resolution. It has a color gamut of 72% NTSC and a response time of two milliseconds. Don't believe that. Uh, we'll talk about response time later, but that's, that's a bogus claim. This is an IPS display leading us to believe that colors are good, viewing angle is good, response time is garbage. The spec that's not listed here is 60 hertz. Uh, we have a refresh rate of 60 hertz. Now in the box I found a USB type A to type C cable. There was a full size HDMI cable in there, a user's manual, a chintzy stand, like super cheap. I mean, super basic, gets the job done, but I would try to replace it ASAP. There was also a five volt, three amp wall charger, but uh, you can power it with the USB-C as well. Now, as far as the monitor itself goes, the build quality is a lot more impressive than I thought it would be. Uh, it's, it's super solid, it's brushed aluminum all around, and it has these really nice thin bezels on the sides and the top. The chin is a little bit thicker, but there's no branding, which is a huge plus in my book. And in the bottom right corner of the display, there's a hole that's apparently for a pen, if you want to stick a pen in there and use it as a stand, like a makeshift stand. I've seen this before, and I actually tried it out with this display, it works well. Um, I actually kind of like it better than the cheap stand that uh, they included. I really love that the screen is matte. It wasn't listed anywhere on the product page I was looking for it. At least for me, I, I prefer a matte screen, less glare, less reflections. It's actually kind of the same sort of matte treatment that uh, you'd find on the GS65 Stealth. Very similar in that sense where um, you're not looking at yourself when you're in the middle of a game. So uh, that was nice to see. Behind the display, there's a quartet of threaded screws that are presumably for some sort of weird base amount that I'm not familiar with. If you guys know, just comment down below. But yeah, it's sort of in a weird trapezoidal configuration as opposed to the traditional square. So I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what kind of mount it supports, but they're there. Don't mind that magnetic plate in the middle. I actually added that after the fact. It's not stock. I, I put it on there uh, for the upcoming project that I mentioned earlier. On the left side, you get a micro USB port and I saw them use that uh, on the product page. If you wanted to hook up like a wired keyboard and mouse, you could do so straight through your monitor using like a micro USB to USB type A adapter, like an on the go adapter. So that's actually kind of cool. Just below that are five OSD buttons that are really tiny, uh, especially for my fat nubby fingers. They could have been a little bit bigger, but uh, I guess I'm not gonna complain too much. They do have a nice click to them and they let you navigate through a surprisingly good amount of options. You've got your typical run of the mill brightness, contrast and sharpness adjustment. There's different presets ranging from standard to gaming to movie and so forth. You can change the color temperature or your individual red, green and blue parameters as well as change where the OSD sits on your screen if you want it to be wedged into a corner or right smack dab in the middle like it is now. There's also HDR mode, which is not true HDR by any any means. It kind of just throws like a saturation filter on the screen, which I think with some tuning, you know, in the OSD, you might be able to make it look decent in some games or even movies, um, but it's it's not it's not true HDR. And then you've got low blue light adjustment, volume, this actually has speakers, built-in speakers that get pretty loud with relatively little distortion, surprisingly. I wouldn't use them for your everyday sound, but uh, you know, apart from being relatively tinny and not having much of a low frequency representation, they actually don't sound too bad for uh, what you might expect. But the real kicker here 
here is the FreeSync option. I did not know that this thing supported FreeSync. There was no listing of it, no mention of it on the product page, so I was really surprised to find it. So I found out that the range is actually 40 to 60 FPS, which is not great. I shouldn't say it's not great, because if you have like uh, an entry level or a budget GPU, or even like a Raven Ridge APU, you might be hitting that 40 to 60 FPS sweet spot, and hey, you got free sync all throughout that range. Uh, but for everyone else, if you're uh, most likely above that, you're probably not gonna benefit much from the free sync implementation here. It's also worth noting that this is not free sync 2, so you miss out on certain features like low frame rate compensation. So if you dip below that 40 FPS, and I did test this on the panel, you are gonna immediately start screen tearing, you know, a assuming that uh, the game is prone to it. After playing around with it some more, I also learned that the FreeSync is only supported over HDMI, um, which means it's not a G-Sync compatible display. It will not take FreeSync or use adaptive sync with a GeForce GPU. I tried it with a GTX 1050 Ti, as well as a GTX 1080 Ti. It did not work because uh, even though this does have a display port on it, which we'll get to, adaptive sync only works through HDMI, which does not meet the requirements for G-Sync compatible monitors. Let's circle back to the display itself. We have a USB Type-C on the right side of the panel. Uh, this is gonna transmit power and data. It's actually how I'm powering the device right now from our uh, testbed PC back here, which is running a Ryzen 7 1700 and an RX 570. And just below that is another USB Type-C port, but this one supports Thunderbolt 3. So it is compatible with Thunderbolt 3 supported devices like this laptop. So there's a single USB Type-C port here. You can connect it with a single cord and have uh, power, display port signal, additional USB, all that sort of thing with a single cable. It's a very handy protocol to have and it makes this infinitely more usable and flexible in every way. Last but not least, we've got a mini display port and HDMI port. I really love the fact that you get your pick of the litter between the two and the fact that the HDMI is full size because mini HDMI ports are crap. It's very flimsy and fragile, it breaks easily. So the fact that we get full size here on such a thin display that's probably only about nine, 10 millimeters thick, is, is, uh, is very, very nice to have. I mean, altogether, this is the top selling point for this product is its IO. It makes this product so flexible for, you know, pulling it just off the shelf whenever you need it for whatever device you're connecting it to. As far as the actual performance of this thing goes, I mean, it, it looks fantastic. The brightness and contrast and sharpness of the display is great. I, I wouldn't say it's it's 100% of, of what our GS65 Stealth is here, but it's pretty damn close. And, uh, and using it as a companion monitor with this laptop is beautiful. It's kind of jarring when you have a companion display that's significantly lower quality than the primary display. This is a really nice premium, you know, their previous flagship laptop being paired with this $170 Chinese brand display. It, it keeps its own. It holds its own. And I was actually really impressed uh, using it as a companion display. Being an IPS panel, I mean, the colors really pop. They're super rich and vibrant. Uh, again, not 100% up to par with a premium gaming laptop LCD, but definitely not too far behind. The question that was probably on all your guys' mind when I started this video was, can it game? Uh, yes, yes it can. All those characteristics I just mentioned, brightness, contrast, sharpness, color, they all benefit a gaming experience as well. And this is a pretty decent gaming panel. The only thing holding it back really, apart from lackluster free sync support, which again, wasn't really to be expected in the first place, is ghosting. Because the response time, the response time is definitely not two milliseconds as advertised. But this is really only an issue for fast paced games, like first person shooters that have a lot of movement. Uh, and even still, I was enjoying myself playing Doom and several matches of CSGO where I kind of forgot about the ghosting and it really just boils down to the individual. Some people are more sensitive than others, so you're gonna have to decide for yourself how important that is. But altogether, I mean, I think it's a well-rounded gaming uh, monitor. If you're looking for something that's more portable and on the go, that isn't necessarily a full-fledged gaming laptop. The only other thing I would dock it for in the gaming department is the fact that you encounter screen tearing quite a bit of the time. Uh, unless you have that sweet spot AMD GPU that hovers in the 40 to 60 FPS range in uh, the majority of titles, you're gonna see some screen tearing. May I say though that having screen tearing on a 13 inch monitor is uh, a little bit more tolerable because you just can't see it as much. So overall, I really like this monitor. It's kind of won me over. The aesthetic is top notch, the build quality 
quality is solid. I love the connectivity options. The downsides include the chintzy stand. It sucks, it's really crappy. The response time is leaves something to be desired. Maybe they can improve upon that on a 2.0 model if they really wanna target this towards gamers. And then finally, the weak free sync range just left me thirsty for more. So uh, all together though, fantastic display. I'll put a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed. Like, like, like the video. And also, if you like this shirt, I'm gonna whore myself out right now. Screw with confidence. Buy the Screw with Confidence shirt. Uh, I'll put a link in the description as well, or you can just go to bitwit.tech. Comes in two different colors, so check them out. All proceeds go to me. As always, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.